Welcome back to another pine hosting tutorial. In this video, we're going to show you how to install the pterodactyl panel using a simple one-line installer. First, we'll need to right-click onto our Windows icon on our computer and select the terminal. This will open our CMD. The next thing you'll need to do is connect to your server with SSH. So we're gonna go ahead and type SSH followed by the root, at, and then your server's IP address. And then just press enter. If it asks you to confirm the fingerprint like here, then you'll just type yes and then enter your password. We're just gonna paste that in. So now once you're logged in, you'll need to update the packages. So we will need to type the following command, apt, update, and, and, apt, upgrade, minus y. And then just press enter and let it run. So once that's done, we will need to paste the installer command in we will also put that command in the description below so you can easily copy it. So let's just go ahead and paste that into our terminal and press enter. Now you will see this menu with a few options. We will want to install both the game panel and the wings. So we will enter the option number two and press enter to continue. Now it will ask you to enter a database name, which can be left empty. And in this case, it will use the default, which is mentioned in the brackets. So panel. So just press enter there. And now the same goes here with the database username. We're just going to press enter and that will use the default. Here you will need to set a password for your database. So go ahead and do that. Just enter any password you want to use and press enter. And now you will need to set a time zone. So if you click on that link that's given here, it will take you to a website where you can find your exact time zone by selecting the continent and the region to find your area code. So let's just click that real quick. We're just going to go to America, for example, and this is all the area codes. So just pick whatever your location is and then copy that and paste it into your terminal. You can also just press enter. And in this case, it will just use the default, which is mentioned in the brackets. We're just going to go with the default in this situation. Now you'll need to provide an email address for both the following fields. So we're just going to go with our email and then we're going to enter the same email here and press enter. In the next step, you'll need to set up the username for the initial account. We're just gonna go with admin, which is the simplest thing. And this is also what you will use to log into your panel in the future. Then go ahead and fill in the first name and the surname. Even with just placeholders, it really doesn't matter. We're just gonna go with pine as initial name and then surname hosting. And then finally, enter the password you want to use when logging into your account. Moving on, if you're planning on using your own domain to host this panel, you can just enter it here, but we are going to use the machine's IP instead. So just copy paste that in here and press enter. Now for setting up the firewall, we will go with no, but if you know how to manage a firewall, you can type yes instead, but if it's not something you know how to manage, it is not recommended. So here, before you continue, check on all your settings to ensure that they are all correct. Once you have checked that everything is correct, you can type Y to continue with the installation and just let it run. Now, at some point, you will see a message asking to send telemetry data. We're going to say no to that and continue with the installation by pressing enter. Once that is done, it will state, as you can see here, that your panel installation was completed. And this should be accessible now via your machine's IP address. So now you can finally connect to your game panel. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Just paste the IP address into our browser and putting all our username details. So admin and our password and login and you're in. Now the next step is to actually finish the Wings installation. So we're gonna go back to our terminal. As you can see here, it mentions panel installation was complete. Do you want to proceed with the Wings installation? We're gonna go type yes to continue and then give this some time to install. Then it will ask you to automatically configure a firewall. We don't want to set up a firewall, so we will go with no. But like I said previously, if you wish to set that up, you can do so. Just make sure that you know how to manage a firewall in the future if you're willing to set up one. For database host, we're gonna go with no. Database host is only needed if you want the database for your game server. We're not using one, so we will go with no in this case. For HTTPS, we're also going to go with no, as it's only needed if you have used a domain. We haven't used one, so we're going with no. And finally, on continue installation, we'll go with yes and let it finish the installation. Once done, you will see that the Wings installation was completed in your terminal and that to continue, you'll need to further set up the Wings through your panel. 
So now we're going to head back to our panel and click on this little icon here that says admin. And on the left hand side, you will click on location. Then on the right corner, click on create new. And you'll need here to enter the location you want to use for your server. We're just going to go with NA1 and then click on create. Then we're going to click on nodes. And once we're here, we're going to go on create new. For the name, we're going to go with node one. And then here, you'll need to paste the machine's IP address and also at the bottom of that, switch from an SSL connection to an HTTP connection. So we're going to paste that in and switch that right now to HTTP connection. Then you'll need to enter the memory you want to allocate to your server in mebibytes, not gigabytes. So we're just going to search with Google how to convert gigabytes to mebibytes. And if your server has, for example, 256 gigabytes, this is the equivalent of that into mebibytes. So we're just going to copy that and paste that into our panel. Then for memory over allocation, we're just going to put zero and also the same for disk over allocation to just disable their functions. This is something that is basically used in case a node happens to exceed the allocated memory. Entering zero will prevent creating new servers to over allocate that. But in general, it is fine to over allocate if you have a lots of servers that might not be using all their allocated memory. Just keep an eye on the system usage. Then depending on your machine's disk space, you will also need to make that into mebibytes. We have two terabytes on this machine, so we're gonna convert that into mebibytes. Then once you have the number, you're gonna also go ahead and paste that into your total disk space. Once that is done, you can go ahead and click on create node. The final step is configuring the panel's wings. To do that, we will need to first go over to the configuration tab on our panel and then click on generate token. We're gonna use this token to auto configure the wings. So go ahead and copy the entire thing. And then we're gonna paste that into our terminal. Now that the wings have been configured, we need to check that they actually work. To check that, we will need to type wings followed by a space dash dash debug and click enter. So we want that this runs smoothly with no errors, but also to double check that this actually works. If we go back to our panel and click on our nodes, their server will now appear in the list with a little green heart. So that means it's working. So now that we have confirmed that everything works, we're going to start the wings as a service so it permanently stays on. Before continuing with creating the service, just press Ctrl C to close the wings debug before you run any commands. So we will enter the command systemctl start wings and press enter. Now we will need to check once again if the green heart is on our panel. If it is, we're good to go. And yes, it is there. So we can continue by starting to set up our server. To do that, we will need to use an egg, but we're not going to be using the provided ones from Pterodactyl. We're going to use a community made one as those usually provide a lot more benefits and are easier to use. We will use the Rust tag from this GitHub page, which we will also list in the description of this video. Now click on the file that says eggrustallcarbonbuilds.json and we're just gonna go ahead and download the raw version of this file to our PC. We will need to head back over to our panel and go into the nests tab. Here we will need to import and select the egg you downloaded from your PC. So click on import egg and then just open that in. And you also need to associate the nest to what the game you're using it for is. So we're going to go with Rust and click Import. Now that is done. The next step is to go to the Nodes tab again and click on the node you created and then go to Allocations. Here you will need to assign new allocations. So go ahead and enter your machine's IP address. Now we're going to type the ports that we need, either manually or by picking a port range, which will make assigning multiple ports easier than typing each one manually. For us, we would enter 28015-28017, which will be our game port, Archon port, and Steam Query port. And then lastly, with a comma, 28082 for the Rust Companion app. Once that is done, click Submit and it will be ready. Then we will need to go into our servers tab and create a new server by clicking create new. So here we'll just need to enter any name. We're just gonna go with Pine Hosting and the server owner email address. We're just gonna go with the email address we previously used. Continuing in default allocation, you need to enter your server's IP address and the main game port. And in the additional allocations, we're just gonna enter the other ports needed for the game server. So let's go ahead and do that. Obviously, these chains per game will always Google the ports for whatever game you want to host. 
Moving on, we'll need to set up certain limits for the database, CPU and memory to avoid overloading your machine and filling up your disk. You can leave the I.O. as it is, the default number, but for this space you actually need to enter a number, something decent like 50 gigabytes. You will need to convert that again from gigabytes to mebibytes, so just quickly go and convert that to Google again and paste that into your disk space. Then if we scroll down to Nest Configuration, we'll need to select the Rust tag we previously installed from the drop down menu. So just click Rust here and then on the egg, the last one which we installed. Uh, moving on, we're going to see our startup configuration. You can edit that if you wish to, but it's not recommended. And in ARPCON port, you'll need to manually enter the port you assigned for it. In this case, it is 28016. Make sure to also change your ARPCON password to a secure password. And then fill in all the other ports required for your game server. Once you're done configuring everything according to your taste and needs, you can go ahead at the bottom of the page and click on create server. And now your server was successfully created on the panel, we can go even ahead and launch it. And that's it. If you need any further assistance, feel free to reach out to our support team. We're always happy to help.